Hello, I'm Peter Bell. I'm CEO of Kermode Resources. Up here at Mount Sicker with Justin DeVoe of 911 Mining, checking out our new permit area. Our first permit ever for this project, mechanical trenching. Talk to you about why we did that kind of work and where. Let's go for a walk. How many times have you driven up and down this road, Justin? Hundreds. <laughs> yeah. Back in 2022, the first time you brought me up this mountain, we stopped somewhere nearby, but this road hadn't been built. So we didn't get the benefit of seeing all this. <sighs> That's the Tom shaft up there. Oh, is it? Yeah. What's the mark? Any marker? Just flagged off. That's okay. going to be... The right tag? That's going to be filled in when we oh, wow. do the trenching work. It'd be interesting to get in there, get that third dimension view, right? Absolutely. This project, the way it's been set up, the historical work, it's amazing how many different dimensions of kind of surface exposure we see here and there. <laughs> These old bulldozer trenches that run for a couple hundred meters and this road that runs a couple hundred meters. So we plan to put trenches in up all along here following the road yep. as well as trenching along this ditch here. Yep. Any highlights of grade that we got down here? <sighs> Grab samples all along here were, were really good. Yeah. Um, we got a nice exposure here. You have the contact of yep. two rock types, two kinds of schist chloritic schist here you can see the sulfide exposure you have quite a bit more calcopyrite in your chloritic stringer zone as you can see over here One of our drill holes. Yeah, a backpack drill hole. Gotta love that piece of equipment. The potential to use that in and around the trenching. Yeah, I think I, like. I think every <laughs> every area that we trench or so we That's should dream. create exposure and test it. Pop a hole in. By hook or by crook, every way you can. Dig it by hand, drill it by hand, <laughs> you know. But this will be the first time with mechanized equipment too. Little bulldozers, little back row, what do you think? Probably uh, something like a Kubota 80 even. Yeah. Small excavator. Yep. Yeah. What do they use to make these ropes? That? Yeah, excavator. So this is getting to the heart of it. Like yeah, you, you, you can, for, yeah, you you can the see the sulfides all over the road. This entire area here, you see sulfides all the way from that culvert down there. There's a good amount of sulfides in all the material in the road. Whoa. You're cutting through massive sulfide yep. veins in some of the areas here. Yep. And, and we've got some results. We've got the XRF stuff that we published in November. And maybe there was like 61 samples that I was putting together on a data compilation thing recently. And 35 of them are from like the crest there down to the spot over there. Yes. The culvert where you were talking about, where we have kind of rich crop the whole way along. Yeah. And so 35, oh yeah, they say 35 samples over 200 meters, all of them above 2%. Yes. So I first caught that by like, I was like, give me the top cut of all our 60 samples. What are the best ones? And then I was like, well, where are they? I was like, oh, look at that. They're all right here in this cluster. You can see the good sampling, Justin. sulfides. This is all loose. <laughs> this is where the road cuts across the strike of the... The 911 showing. Yeah, this is you see the. Spot. Honey pot. 
This is where we, when I get to come up with a little handheld hammer right over here. This is fun. This is where we did our like hand dug that. trench. All this material here is all our waste on either side. This spot, man. Some of the high grade numbers that came out of here were a little shocking. And this is quartz here. <laughs> Good view down there of some of the quartz. Well, and then and then bulldozer trench right above us too. Like that's the crazy thing for me is that we've got a couple dimensions. Again, we talk to these geologists and they're trying to model things out and give us the drill hole, give us the third dimension. Well, yeah, eventually. But look, you know, 200 meters of surface exposure that was created, what, 40 years ago, 50 years ago? 1967. There you go, even more. We have a sample up there as well. Really? One of those we, I think we sent out to ALS as well. Oh, good. Well, but, that's, yeah, so right there, you want it three dimensions, right? So we've got our exposure, we've got the down the road, we've got the up the, up the bulldozer trench, and there's another trench pointing, pointing off in the other direction. There's short little exploration at it. In terms of setting up a geological thesis for the exploration nerds out there who want to get all the data and plot things up themselves, we got a lot of the building blocks ready to go in the... <laughs> Right? <laughs> but it's our responsibility to put that story out to the public and do it in a way that's appropriate, right? For a public company. Yep. Whew. And the, the strike of your mineralization, about 100 meters up the road, everything s starts to head down this way, following the, the grade of the old road. That's right. There's an exploration at it down there. It's about 18 meters long. Yep. There's a showing, and there's two bulldozer trenches down there, and we got... More, eh? uh, we got 15% oh. copper on an XRF from a sample I found in the bulldozer trench down there. That's the main showing up there. We're on the old historic road that they used. This is the boundary for North Couch. And again, your sulfides. Oh, it's here. Exposed here. You can see the rusty. ARD. Yeah, just happening au naturel. Just, Thank yeah. you very much. So this is um, this underneath all this newly forested area here is the chert block where we have a saze from here and there's chert, quartz and schist and we have A few percent copper in all the samples that we took out of here. Down here, there's a old historic trench right here. We sampled some bedrock in there and we got over 15% in an XRF. And down here, there's a old mine at it. This is one of the pieces we pulled off here. So at least for now, this is the boundary that's flagged off of where we're going to stop our trenches, just on the edge of this, Forest right where the sulfides are. But the strike continues that way and this way, of course. about 800 meters each way. So one of the big things with, it, with, that, with trenching is exposure and potential for acid rock drainage. You so, have it without being exposed. So it's happening without anybody being here to do anything. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, about when you get a public company involved. Of what are they going to do? How are they going to leave it? I want to see it better than it was before we got here. But what does that mean exactly? You know, there's a bunch of baseline data that we don't have. I'd really like to get environmental monitoring. Um, I'm gonna start pH testing. Good. And so why start with trenching here? I asked it before I say it again, like why trenching here? I know why for me, some, you know, speculators, investors, market people, geology people, they disagree. But the mining engineers that I know, I say, hey, we wanna move as much rock as we can and do MET testing as soon as we can. And they say, good idea. There's a whole new playbook. 
I think, to be written for mine exploration and development in the 2020s in BC and beyond. I think you've been writing that book, Justin. Kermode's been here trying to underwrite you. And I say we should do more of it, right? And so we've been able to dig 10 tons plus, 15 tons, Justin, by hand from this spot. Here, 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 a little bit over here, right? Let alone the stuff that the loggers exposed as well, too. There is such a huge synergy potential between logging and mining in BC. It's this road build that led us to finding this material. And there's a lot of potential for different stakeholders to go between industries, right? People talk about logging having a hard time. People talk about mining having a hard time. Let's go BC. Like, we're better together, I think. The fact that we've been seeing this kind of intense mineralization over significant distance, and the fact that this is supposed to be cleared and logged, but for us, it's like perfect storm setup of get in there and dig. You know, we can always drill. Maybe we can drill a resource with the... Uh, with the backpack drill? Yeah. I'd love to see that. I think that's great. But it's the QAQC on the drilling that, that's been the bottleneck on that for us. You know, to get a QP up here at the, at the drill bit, watching and logging, that's been the thing that's been too expensive so far. One of the things I'd like to do too is actually clean out this ditch. You can see there's a lot of sloughed in material. All the banks have fallen off. There's a lot of fractures in this rock so it'd be nice to clean this out and we found some of our best samples all along this ditch in the bedrock so it'd be nice to see what we can find in this 300 meter stretch of road theoretically ore sorting would remove a lot of the sulfides so you could potentially make this non-peg material and non-acid generating well and just to point out too we're also concerned about ARD and all this stuff with mining but Keep in mind that when the logging guys came through here and built their logging road, they were using what we consider to be like high grade copper mineralized material, and they're just leaving it on the road and building a road with it beyond leaving it on the road. So they're not, I don't see them, I don't know if they're getting monitored for uh, the amount of heavy metal that's coming off their road build, but it's, there's a lot of it, I would assume. And there's a potential too to actually clean up a lot of this material in the road yeah. down there it's it's 10 meters deep same with over here going all the way up so there's there's tons and tons of road material that could be used in the ore sorting process mini ore sorter along with the logging road build as a scout program not likely anytime soon but talk about integrating these industries and finding new ways Team Canada or whatever, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Elbows up. Elbow, I don't even know. What does that mean? <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Glad we've had a chance to be able to push this project forward a little bit. It deserves to go a lot further, in my opinion. You know, it's a crazy world out there right now. Lots of weird stuff going on. I think projects that are close to home matter more than ever. And working with the people who live there. Please, thank you. What else? Keep it simple. Keep it super simple, right? That's what we're trying to do. That's start with the trenching. I don't want to drill a deep hole and miss. I want to go dig some more of this high grade copper that we're finding, right? Keep it super simple. We'll see you down the road, you guys. Hope to see you again.